I have traveled the wilderness of Sri Lanka for almost 40 years. This November, we take you on a safari like never before, where we travel to see the great gathering of elephants at Mineria and Kaudula National Parks. Join me as we travel the wilds of Mineria and Kaudula to see the magic of this event that has now become the sixth greatest wildlife spectacle in the world. Sri Lanka is the best place in the whole world to see and observe Asian elephants. So we know many of the elephants as individual personalities. We then travel to elephant country, which is Udavalava National Park. You will be traveling with a group of experienced wildlife photographers and enthusiasts who will be able to tell you lots of stories, lots of experiences, which is much better than a normal safari that you would go for. We then arrive in Yala National Park, which is the home of the leopard in Asia. People say that leopards are elusive. Yala's leopards proves you wrong as they walk the day as much as they walk the night in this amazing wilderness. They're not only bringing you the unique wildlife of this small island nation, but also the stories that are connected to them from the experts who have worked in the field has. Let me take you close for an immersive couch safari this November. This is the first in Sri Lanka. Don't miss this experience. Good afternoon from Sri Lanka, good evening and good morning for all our viewers around the world and this is the second uh, streaming of our uh, couch safari from, from Sri Lanka. We are welcome to our, uh, our repeat uh, viewers and new viewers for this uh, uh, new episode. Uh, we are broadcasting from Kaudula National Park. Uh, we are delighted to streaming this to you from Sri Lanka for the first time. Now, uh, let's let's go to the uh, field camera where Chitra and... Yeah, it looks a little gloomy, I think. Uh, the swallows are... <laughs> swallows are spelling that. Oh, a lot of it. I guess this is a time of plenty for them with the arrival of the rains. Yeah. We have the, all the insects coming out, yeah. and I guess that's why in Singhala they are even called the Hilihinias. Yes, because yeah. they are much more active around yeah. that time. And they also they kind of signal the the first arrivals of the migration, isn't it? Right, right, the, right. The, all so. that is kind of coincides. You know? Yeah. Oh, this is what you see here is the sluice gates of Kaul uh, National Park. And uh, this is uh, just they turning to the access road towards the uh, uh, grasslands of, of Kaul National Park. Oh, this is uh, uh, what you see here is the uh, uh, giant squirrel. Uh, resting on the on the branch, I think during the daytime, uh, of the in the in the Mineria, sorry, Kaudula National Park, and now they are Dr. Uh, Ch uh, Dr. Fernando and Chitral is uh, uh, slowly approaching uh, to the through the main road, and uh, so yeah, this is the gi giant squirrel that you will see. Uh, there are two color faces uh, for the giant squirrel uh, that are living in Sri Lanka. One is the black color, uh, which is in the wet part of Sri Lanka. Of course, they can camouflage and, and they can elude all the predators. But uh, the dry zone species, dry zone version of the giant squirrel is brownish, uh, grayish color. And uh, they're very active in the daytime, but this guy is just resting, I think, uh, because of the heat of the day.
Oh, it's very unusual to uh, see this uh, giant squirrels are resting in uh, in one on on one branch for this long. Uh, but yeah, here is the is the national bird of Sri Lanka, uh, which is the Sri Lanka jungle fowl. Uh, this is a beautiful bird and just uh, came out came out to the open uh, on the log after the rain uh, just to uh, sort of dry and uh, dry his uh, wet feathers this is uh, this is uh, uh, this is an endemic bird endemic bird means that this bird can only be seen uh, here in sri lanka the sri lanka jungle fowl or the jackal. Uh, yesterday also we have seen jackals or today also we have spotted uh, a few jackals in uh, in Kaudula National Park. So they are just uh, walking around in the grasslands, uh, look for something uh, to uh, to get. Um, and, um, I mean, and you can see the, the grassland is very uh, nice and green after the rain and uh, still uh, they are just uh, you know, um, has has wet uh, wet uh, coats. They're trying to dry while they are, are running around. And what you see here is the other two um, adjutant stalks. This is one of the larger stalks uh, that can be found in Sri Lanka. Uh, yesterday, some of the viewers asked uh, whether we can see uh, adjutant stalks. Uh, here, you can see two adjutant stalks, uh, and they are also walking around and and looking for uh, frogs, especially after the after the rains. Uh, they are also uh, mostly uh, open grassland birds and the open water water birds, the largest stalks. You can see um, the first elephant herd of Kaudulla that we spotted. Um, they're just just slowly coming out from the forest. And uh, so let's uh, hear from uh, Dr. Kiraj and uh, Chitra. Well, it seems like uh, they are not there yet, and the first camera has reached to this uh, particular uh, elephant herd. Uh, you can see uh, one big male is also uh, roaming with with the herd. Usually, the this kind of big bulls are not very common to uh, to travel with the with the herds. And there's another uh, smaller bull is also you can see on the far right side of the uh, of the forest, and they're slowly coming into the uh, grasslands to feed. And uh, this is how they usually come out to the to the open grassland from the forest. When they are in the forest during the daytime, uh, you you wouldn't see them, but uh, you will you can see them when they come out to the to the grassland. Uh, before the main herd came, uh, there are two more younger uh, males also came uh, to the grassland, and they are just feeding. Uh, you can't see them uh, right now, but uh, they are uh, feeding on on the grassy areas. Um, so the male elephant is, I'm sure there's um, some, uh, he's also looking for some uh, uh, females that are receptive for mating. Uh, they're just checking everything. I think that is why he's traveling with the, uh, with the herd. And this is that younger male that I was talking about. And uh, these guys are young um, bulls, um, usually uh, re you know, getting ready to go out of the park or the chital and, and drugs. Let's see uh, you know what, but uh, yeah, so that's, that's that bull elephant uh, I was talking about. And now these, these young bulls are, you know, just they are getting ready to go um, out of the herd. And that is why they are sort of traveling a little further away from the herd. And then uh, very soon, 
when they they become uh, uh, when they sexually uh, matured enough so they'll become loners they'll become bull elephants then they will uh, no longer associate with the uh, with the same herd and they'll walk around all by themselves uh, to uh, continue their uh, lifestyle in uh, in min area and caudal areas Yeah, now s you can see now the some of the younger um, a animals um, started to play a little bit um, with soil and, uh, and mud, especially after the rain. That's part of their fun. They're like kids, and they love to play on the ground. In the ground is wet and wet. Yeah, so our both crews are close to each other and are cruising uh, towards, uh, towards the grassland and you can see nice close canopy forests of the uh, dry part, uh, dry zone of Sri Lanka and uh, spotted deer, um, you know, not very common in, in, in grasslands here in, in Min area, they are a bit shy, uh, it's a you know, larger uh, spotted deer and they are very common in other, part, other uh, parts of Sri Lanka, they are common here too but they are very shy to come to the open grasslands. Uh, when they see a vehicle like uh, our safari jeeps, they usually uh, run away to the uh, to the forest. Uh, Uh, now you can see the close-up of these two um, bulls. Uh, one is a little bigger, and uh, he, it looks like he has he's wet, and uh, I think he must have uh, gone to the water somewhere and had a shower before he came out to the uh, to the uh, open. And uh, so they, you know, you know that he's not interested in eating most. Around in the with the with the herd, uh, and in the foreground you can see the beautiful peacock male, and uh, their feathers are getting la uh, longer now uh, with the with the rainy season, and after the rainy season they'll start uh, uh, you know dancing and try to attract uh, females. Uh, that's the uh, uh, peacocks. So let's see uh, you know how what what when these these guys to come out of the to the open and see uh, this. You know, they started to slowly, slowly following the edge of the forest, and then uh, coming out of the, out to the open. Uh, Ananda Vikram Singh asked uh, we have whether we have 26 endemic species, uh, bird species in Sri Lanka, uh, but now uh, there are 34 Ananda and uh, you know we can see uh, about four in, uh, in uh, 
Kaudula National Park, uh, like Grey Hornbill, uh, Sri Lanka Jungle Fowl, uh, the, um, Brown Cap Babbler, uh, and uh, things like about four or five uh, uh, sorry, endemic birds in that you can uh, see here in Sri Lanka. Uh, now the elephants are started coming a little faster. Uh, when they come to the open, uh, they just come out a uh, little faster. When they come to the edge of the forest, they are a bit, bit, bit uh, you know, uh, they they are just checking whether everything conditions are, are safe to come out, and that's their usual behavior. Uh, and then they come out uh, to the open uh, very freely if there's no danger. Now you can see some of the babies are following their uh, sub-adults, and uh, and now two big males are also following the herd uh, to the to the open. Um, let's see, we might see some. Um, you know, very interesting interactions uh, between uh, the females and, and, and males. Let's see, hope we, we hope we can see some interesting behavior. Uh, Lahiru Basnaika asks whether uh, the giant squirrel is the national animal of Sri Lanka. Uh, but Lahiru, I think there's no national animal of, for Sri Lanka. Uh, the, we have national bird, national flower, national tree but there's no national animal as such. Oh, another part of the, the herd is just coming out now. Yeah, you can see. I just uh, just take this opportunity to uh, remind our, our viewers to, uh, viewers about the the special competition uh, which was introduced by the Sri Lanka Tourism uh, for our international travels. This is not for uh, for Sri Lankan travels uh, to win holidays in Sri Lanka. So please log into uh, www.srilanka.travel backslash wildlife stream. So you will be able to uh, win uh, a, a holiday in Sri Lanka. So please uh, log in and, and um, join the competition. Kapila Ubunwardhan is checking, um, are there any tuskers in Kaudulla? Um, uh, Kapila, um, yes, there are some tuskers in Kaudulla, uh, both uh, Mineria and Kaudulla. Uh, the most commonly uh, encountered tusker is tusker called um, Sumedha, a very beautiful tusker uh, that goes, uh, you know, shuttling between uh, Mineria and Kaudulla area. But real, you will see um, tuskers, uh, to, you know, you might be able to see some uh, small tuskers today. Um, we'll see whether whether we are lucky uh, as the as the uh, live stream is going on.
Tushar Pradeep is checking where the, how many elephants are in Kaudula National Park. Uh, it's, a, it's a tough question, uh, Tushar, uh, because, uh, you know, these elephants are not confined to uh, Kaudula, only to Kaudula National Park. They are going uh, back and fo uh, forth uh, between uh, many habitats around uh, this park. So um, we have, uh, you know, there's a study that uh, that has been conducted by Dr. Prithviraj and the team, and they were managed to identify individually identify about 350 plus animals that are both uh, moving uh, from main area to Kaudula, Kaudula, Kaudula to main area. So we should should consider these two national parks as one one habitat, you know, one one habitat. So one ecosystem. So um, you know, definitely it should be more than that. Uh, so so far we can say that you know 350 to uh, 400 animals are, are um, in this area. But uh, you know, look, you know, asking the number is always the common thing. Or you can see a uh, very. Oh, that's a cobra, no? Yeah. I think Chitra is taking some pictures of little cobra right, that so they have cute. spotted. Let's see. Let's hear from them. So what we are seeing here, Doc, is a baby cobra. They're looking very anxious because I think the vehicle passed very close to it. Right. Um, now he seems to settle down and take cover. I'm sure he'll quietly go towards that uh, termite mound that might give him the the needed cover. Oh, no. I think the cobra is gone now um, this is a resting water monitor oh my god this is a big one um, water monitors are usually the you know ground animal a ground reptile it's a big one and uh, this guy is on the tree I think it's just resting um, sometimes they climb trees they're good climbers too uh, and they go to the you know this kind of nice uh, branch and take a siesta um, and during the daytime once the tummy is full, they usually, you know, have this this habit of uh, climbing trees and and resting. So he's also uh, taking a, a daytime nap there in Kaudula. That was quite a sighting, a little That's baby cobra. <laughs> a little package of a surprise. Uh, they look very cute when they're small, aren't they? I mean, yeah, but I think they are equally deadly. I oh. think they have the same poison as the big ones. <laughs> <laughs> the same, madam. A little less in quantity, quantity. but they can put you into serious trouble. Exactly. Yeah, but, yeah, I personally always feel that baby cobras are some of the cutest snakes. Oh. Yeah, when they put the hood up, right. they look absolutely gorgeous. The thing with cobras is, although they are deadly, they generally don't they, they warn you usually, yeah. you know, unless yeah. maybe you step on it or something. They're smart snakes. Yeah, they wouldn't so waste their venom or their effort right. on something that's too big to eat. Right. So they are, they're smart in the sense they'll always warn you unless you accidentally step on them. Right. But it's a little different when it comes to vipers. Which, uh, right, they are much very more aggressive. likely to just uh, yeah. strike at you. I guess that's why people also um, generally don't kill cobras and there's a um, mythology yeah. connected with them that it yes. is a bad thing to yes. kill a cobra. So several animals fortunately in Sri Lanka are in, in a dotted line connected to religion, uh, the gods people venerate and it brings right. them a lot of uh, safety as a result. Right. Yeah, the water monitor just go down from the tree and then slowly 
walking into the to the bushes oh he's t resting he took a rest and this uh, footage is coming from our first camera uh, not the camera that are traveling with Chitral and uh, the one camera is already uh, uh, mm. went to the park a little earlier uh, than Chitral's jeep Well, Ravi is asking, are there a um, lot of reptiles in Kaurula? You know, there are, not a, not a whole lot. Um, you know, the, s the snakes and other reptiles, you know, what you see here is the land monitors and the water monitors are commonly can be seen. Uh, cobras can be seen, python sometimes can be seen. Uh, there are a lot of other uh, reptiles uh, that are associated with the dry zone forest like the Kaurula and also the grasslands in, in Kaurula. Yeah, there are. But very difficult to see them for a general um, visitor to the park because you're not supposed to get down. Or, um, but you can see these reptiles only um, if they're out uh, right by the roadside. And uh, if you're lucky, uh, if you spot them, um, that is why the driving uh, slowly uh, in the national park is very important so that you can spot these uh, little creatures. Um, you know, uh, the spotting elephant is not a big deal. But uh, you will miss a lot of small animals like these reptiles uh, if you're driving faster. Now these uh, reptiles, uh, like the, what you see here in the water uh, in this screen over the water monitor, the basking is a big part of their their uh, you know physiology uh, because they are cold-blooded animals and they uh, wanted to maintain their uh, body temperature. So the if uh, during the cooler uh, days uh, like today and yesterday, yesterday there was rain and they come out to uh, the sun uh, to bask. Oh, um, you see a, a, a puddle of uh, butterflies. Uh, these are called mostly, um, you know, white white butter butter butterflies. And uh, the butterfly puddling is a very special phenomenon in, in butterfly biology uh, because they come to the ground and to extract minerals to increase their their sexual uh, sexual ability. And uh, you know, it's like you know we are getting supplements right like you know we like to get some supplements human so it's like uh, for the butterflies they uh, they sip uh, different minerals from the so from the uh, salt from the uh, salt and things like that from the soil and to increase their um, you know sexual uh, ability and uh, you can say you know 99 percent of these butterflies that are called uh, mudscaping this particular behavior are males so it's a very uh, interesting uh, behavior. Uh, during the, uh, you know, after the monsoon in the month of uh, January and February, um, you will see large puddles. Uh, some countries you will see huge puddles, but in Sri Lanka, um, you know, depending on the, on the uh, uh, situation of the rains and things like that, and you will see large uh, butterfly puddles like this in uh, dry zone uh, national parks. Oh, here's another again uh, a jackal. Another jackal is uh, is moving around uh, and uh, in search of uh, food. Um, I think you know because of the rainy uh, conditions, uh, they have to come out when there's a, a stop of of rain to t to uh, find something, and that is why they're just uh, jogging around in the in the open uh, areas.
Kania is asking, uh, Sri Lankan cobra is a subspecies of Indian cobra. Uh, not exactly, I think it's the same, same species. Uh, but we have not done any uh, detailed genetical studies to see whether this is a subspecies or not. Um, but right now, uh, for the science that we have, uh, it's, it's the same species as Indian cobra, Kanya. Uh, she's al also asking whether this is a lemon emigrant. Looks like a lemon emigrant, yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, very difficult to, s you know, uh, identify the butterfly at uh, this uh, distance. Uh, uh, because the colors are not uh, very good. Um, one thing I want to remind my our, visi our viewers that we are not, you know, doing any color changes or anything because it's state work, uh, especially in the tea plantations. Oh, okay. And yeah, so uh, I think the biggest culprits of snake bites here are cobras and vipers. Yeah. Uh, and I think there are over 1,500 to close upon 2,000 snake bites annually. Right. But fortunately now. Uh, uh, the medical uh, support is advanced enough in rural hospitals where right. the vast majority of the people uh, survive. Uh, yeah, but I believe still there's the annual death rate due to snake bite is around 200 or something. Yeah. So that is, I mean, compared to, um, we, we talk so much about human elephant conflict, but uh, not to say that every death is not a tragedy, yeah. Yeah. but uh, comparatively, um, their numbers are much less uh, than are killed by elephants. Yeah, I think, as you said, Doc, even a single death is too many, but yeah. but uh, it, it, it just that, oh, there's an elephant on the road, so that's oh, right. interesting. Oh, that's a nice bull. Yeah. Come out then. Let him come. It's beautiful. Oh, my God. 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 Oh, it's very cute. So it's a single bull, isn't it? Just yeah, so this is a typical adult male on his own. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he seems to be in pretty good condition too. It's a big bull, yeah. a mature adult bull. I certainly doesn't look camera shy, <laughs> so he's walking straight to the red ship, which is good news for for us. So elephants actually have very poor eyesight, but they have a good sense of smell and a good sense of hearing. So, yeah. so basically now I guess he kind of detected that we are yeah. here from the sound, the talking we are doing, and the smell perhaps. Too smart. He just gets off the road and you know maintains a bit of a distance. Right. Oh, okay. So that's how we come to Kaurulla. <laughs> that's the magic, you know. It's, uh, yeah. So he's going down the yeah. the bunt. Uh, they have very steady feet on steep climbs, don't they, Doc? They are amazing. I mean, you would think that uh, something like an elephant couldn't uh, go up or down steep gradients, yeah. but it's unbelievable. I mean, they go down extremely steep gradients. Yeah. Oh, this is a, a jackal. Uh, there's another one. I think the jackals are a bit common uh, these days on the grasslands. And uh, you can see it's beautiful specimen, uh, but they're a bit shy when they see um, a jeep or something. Yeah, they just temperate land, yeah. and of course the urine replays. Yeah. So, but what also happens is because there's continuous urine replay that wets the back legs. Oh. So the back legs are continuously wetted with the urine, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of growth of bacteria, okay. which break down the compounds in the urine, okay. and that also gives a lot of water. Okay. So it's a combination of all these things yeah. that we detect. But for elephants, they can probably perceive, breed a lot more to it yeah. than we can because their sense of smell is fabulous. Yeah. So many animals or most animals live in a, in a world of chemical signals, don't they? Exactly. I mean, it's, it's like, I mean, it's another sense that unfortunately 
<laughs> we, <laughs> we are very, 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 we are very poor. light on that so strength. That, yeah. that, that world view is actually close to us. Yeah. It's another world. Especially in the in the reptiles and and snakes, they use smell at a different level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure you got even elephants. You know, like you will see now. If uh, I mean elephant, you will sometimes see sensing the ground yes. and walking because from the smell, yeah, he can detect who went before oh, yes. and which way he went. And as a lovely experience, we were actually once filming with the BBC in Yale at night, uh, and uh, there were two leopards mating. At the, near the Kohambagaswala location, and they were playing mating in that area for about almost 50 minutes before a herd of elephants around 10 o'clock at night came, oh. and that kind of triggered the leopards to move away. And you must see the reaction of the elephants. The matriarch came and sniffed the ground for about five to seven minutes ah. before she let the youngsters come this way. Right, right. Clearly, reading what was there, you right. know, they could almost smell the leopard in right, full. Right, so, absolutely. really amazing. And they can actually uh, probably differentiate individuals from the smell. So yeah. there were some experiments done uh, some years ago. moments with cinnamon hotels and resorts. Juvenile serpent eagle, yeah. So, though they they're called serpent eagles, they do love uh, snakes, but they eat uh, anything that is small that moves around. Yeah, they even uh, eat uh, things like grasshoppers. Yeah, I mean, but so. they they have a tendency to like the the snakes, but uh, yeah, so. About, about six weeks ago, I saw something unbelievably exciting in Yale uh, of a, an absolute uh, battle between a grown serpent eagle and a crested hawk eagle. Yeah, that's, oh, a, that was, that's amazing. Yeah, that was, I mean, for all my years of walking around jungle, that's the first time I saw two species battling for a snake. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, ultimately, the the crested hawk eagle had just enough of it. He was severely punished by the slightly larger serpent eagle, and it uh, got away and flew. And uh, the serpent eagle quietly walked up to the half-dead snake, picked it up, and oh, flew away. I think I can hear some elephants yeah, yeah. calling. Yeah. So these are juvenile. He still has a little bit of the lighter color. Oh, there he goes. On his back. There he goes. Yeah. So we're hearing some elephants calling close by. We'll drive towards Pumala Pi Patria. Oh, what you see here is the um, white bellied sea eagle, which is the largest uh, eagle here in Sri Lanka. Um, they love to catch fish, and um, but this guy is drinking water. Uh, and, uh, you know, they just love uh, open water like the tanks in Kaudul and Mineria. And also, um, they, uh, they love to uh, fish in, in, in the shallow seas, uh, especially in around the uh, near, near shore habitats in, in, uh, around Sri Lanka. And a beautiful uh, eagle, beautiful uh, large eagle uh, that is common in, in this part of, of, of Sri Lanka. Uh, Nimesh uh, Chandula asked uh, a question um, whether there are any other cats 
uh, or leopards in, in Kaurul. Um, yes, Nimesh, uh, we have Sri Lanka has four cats, uh, which is the uh, rusty spotted cat, which that's the smallest cat in the world, and jungle cat, uh, fishing cat, and the leopard. Uh, other than the rusty spotted cat, uh, jungle cat, fishing cat, and the leopard, uh, are there in, in uh, Kaudula, but very difficult to see, especially the small cats. Uh, small cats usually don't come out in the daytime uh, because of the uh, of their safety, um, but leopard is also very rarely uh, spotted in both uh, in Kaudula and, and Mineria. Um, but they are there. You know, you can see the, you saw the vast jungles uh, in Kaudula and they can hide anywhere uh, without uh, without encountering any human human being. Ravi is asking whether there are a lot of different eagles in, in these, na these national parks. Uh, not a whole lot, uh, Ravi. Uh, there are a few uh, eagles that you can easily see, which is the crested, hawk, uh, crested serpent eagle, crested hawk eagle, and, uh, and the white-bellied sea eagle, uh, and things like that. Uh, but there are other raptors also. There are some owl species that you can commonly see in, uh, in, in uh, Kaudulla. But the grasslands are, you know, some some uh, raptors, they love uh, grasslands. Some of the migratory raptors also uh, love grasslands because they can spot uh, small, pre uh, small prey items in the grasslands. They hover around and they pick something from the grasslands. Uh, but uh, those are the sort of common species of raptors that you will see in, in Kaudula. Ravi is also asking what is the rarest seen animal in, in this national park. I, I would say the, the smaller cats are the rarest. Uh, uh, all the cats are, all three cats that have been recorded in, in Kaudulla, which is the jungle cat, uh, fishing cat and the, and the leopards, uh, that are rarest. Rarest means uh, they don't come out in the daytime, but I'm sure nighttime they're active. But unfortunately, we don't have uh, access to these national parks during the nighttime. Um, only for researchers have the access uh, to these parks, uh, but not the uh, general public uh, like you and me. Oh, I just wanted to remind again for, for our viewers about the, uh, the competition being held with the competition for our international travelers to win holidays in Sri Lanka. So, the, uh, so please log in to www.srilanka.travel backslash wild dash stream uh, to uh, apply for the uh, to enter to the competition and also uh, to win the holidays in in sri lanka please do join the competition
or you can see a smaller herd is coming out of from the forest uh, they just just came right out of the forest uh, without any fear uh, without stopping and you can see them uh, they're faster they're moving and it's a, it's a smaller herd uh, I can see the matriarch on the far right hand side and uh, or maybe I'm not sure whether with the other one is the matriarch. You know, very difficult to distinguish the matriarch of the group. Uh, matriarch means the leader of the group. Sometimes the subbattles also lead. Uh, you know, there is a matriarch for the group, but sometimes the uh, role of the matriarch is not sure in in among Sri Lankan elephants. Uh, look at how playful they are. It's amazing to see this sight, and uh, that the herd is coming towards you uh, in these open open plains. Uh, that is what you see in, in uh, Kaudula National Park. It's a very picturesque national park. You see the forest and uh, you will see how the animals are so freely uh, coming out of the park to the open and uh, play and eat and, and interact with each other and interact between uh, herds. And that's what they are here for. Um, this is their sort of theater uh, that they uh, play, uh, pay, uh, they spend uh, uh, some part of, of their life, uh, all the elephants that are in this area. Uh, and you can see that they are not, they, have, they don't have a fear of, of vehicles that are filming vehicle or anything because um, they're used to these vehicles, they're used to the visitors. I'm sure they must be wondering why uh, all these vehicles, what happened to all these vehicles that we have seen uh, last so many years. Um, I'm, I'm sure they have no idea that the entire uh, world is under lock and key uh, because of the COVID situation. Uh, I'm sure um, they are they are they are uh, free from um, any of the disturbances now. So another part of the uh, herd is also coming again uh, from the forest. Uh, we'll see far um, far away that I can see maybe a male uh, due to the size. Uh, let's see how it just. Uh, when it comes closer to us uh, to see whether it's a male or female. Now you can see um, they are uh, coming towards the jeep and uh, and uh, grass is lush and green uh, after the rain and they they enjoy the grass, you know, they love grass than the, than the forest trees. Uh, you can see how, how uh, uh, how uh, you know they, they love to eat these cars and it's clean every drop of uh, sand soil and everything and before they consume it before they eat it Uh, Malati asked uh, his um, small son, uh, his seven-year-old son, is asking how many uh, elephants are there in Kaudula. Uh, Malati, unfortunately, we can't give you, you know, we can't give you the numbers exactly because it's very difficult to count elephants in in Sri Lankan context. Um, as you can see, when the for, uh, the elephants are inside the forest, there's no way to count them. Um, but I, I said earlier, also for f one of our viewers asked the same question, and uh, we have. We managed to catalog about 350 elephants, uh, both male and females, and um, you know there are a lot more than that. And uh, so they are not only living in Kaudula National Park. That I have to emphasize that uh, because these animals are moving uh, from one habitat to the other. So the Kaudula National Park, some part of the year, they are using the Kaudula National Park as their uh, resident areas. Areas. So. Um, we, we don't know the exact numbers. I would say, you know, three to four hundred elephants might be around in this area. But so far, we managed to identify about uh, 300 and 350 plus uh, elephants. I'm sure it, 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 it'll be more than that. Um, the problem is there are some methodologies that we have employed uh, to determine the elephant population, but those are very, very uh, difficult and accuracy is, is, is not that great. Um, that is why the numbers are are, are not sure, Malati. Uh, I hope hope your little one uh, will be happy with my answer. 
Uh, Mahesh asks, uh, what time is the best time, uh, best time of the day to visit Kaudulu National Park uh, for safaris? Uh, Mahesh, uh, definitely it's the, it's the afternoon. Um, you know, if you uh, can enter to the park around 2 to 2, uh, between uh, 2 and 2.30, and uh, that's the best time. Uh, morning time, there are few elephants. Uh, sometimes you wouldn't see any, uh, but if you want to enjoy the uh, peacefulness of the park, uh, without any other vehicles or anything you can come in the morning and and uh, enjoy the scenery and enjoy the serenity of the park but if you want to see the elephants of course definitely uh, afternoon is the, is the best Yeah, Anthony um, is asking, uh, the elephants appears to be uh, habituated. Um, yes, Anthony, because uh, these elephants have seen uh, loads of jeeps, a uh, lot of uh, visitors that are coming to the park, and uh, they know that uh, these visitors have not uh, done any harm for them, and uh, they're somewhat habituated. We are, uh, there are some herds that are not habituated. We have some herds uh, do uh, come to the open very uh, you uh, very uh, frequently but there are some herds that don't come uh, very often to the to the open grassland those kind of herds uh, you will see uh, that they are not habituated but most herds are somewhat habituated uh, ravi uh, ask uh, do elephants always come with the with the group uh, or do they come alone sometimes uh, Ravi, um, uh, you know, the lone, lone animals, yes, there are uh, single animals that you will see, uh, we have shown them, uh, they are mostly males, uh, but uh, what you see in the, in the herds are the mostly female and young males, the males, uh, male animals that are not matured enough to get out of the, uh, of the herd. So uh, if you see a single animal, 99% uh, sure that that single animal is, is a male. So you can identify the male and you can differentiate the male and uh, female uh, with the shape of their, uh, their back. Uh, the female is like a, like a box shape, if you, uh, I would say, and uh, male has a somewhat curved back. And um, uh, yes, the, the males are, are loners and uh, they uh, roam around all by themselves. Uh, not with the herd, but they do uh, get into the herd. They do associate with the herd when they uh, want to find a, a female to to mate, a partner to mate, and that's the time uh, uh, young, sorry, uh, adult uh, males get into the herd. Uh, Nelum asked how far these animals travel uh, from from Kaudulla. Uh, Nelum, uh, it's a it's a tough question to ask uh, because uh, we don't know how far do they travel. Uh, they can travel to uh, many uh, many uh, other parts of of the habit similar habitats in uh, surrounding uh, to the Kaudulla National Park. But we do know now uh, because we have put some ra uh, two radio collars to one of these two herds, and uh, they do travel. Uh, one herd actually traveled to uh, Polonnaru area, uh, pass, passing uh, Giritale tank and everything, and then uh, went to Anga Madilda National Park on a straight line. So that is a very interesting, uh, um, not a migration, like a moment. And then they spend about three days, uh, three, four weeks there, and then come back uh, to, to Kaudula and Mineria. And uh, so they shuttle between the Minneria and Kaudul, which is very close, a few kilometers uh, between uh, Kaudul and Minneria, and to Hurulu National Park, again, a few kilometers. Uh, but the Polonnaru uh, is, a, is a straight distance, is about 20 kilometers. So uh, sometimes they, they do travel to that distance also to a similar habitat. Uh, so that, that area is the one that we consider as a sort of a home range of that particular herd. 
so um, that is why the the habitat connectivity and uh, this uh, connection of the forest habitat is extremely vital uh, to uh, to ensure their free movement Uh, now you can see a uh, very interesting behavior these are two big bulls i mean you can see you can clearly see the size difference between the other animals and and these two and uh, they're trying to a uh, bit of a you know test their uh, test their uh, strength and uh, this is uh, more of a ritualistic behavior uh, not really a fight or anything and the one on the right side is is in must uh, obviously during the must time uh, they have energy they are uh you know they travel a lot and but this this is like a ritualistic behavior even during their you know his junior years also they wrestle uh, and test their strength with the other animals so that behavior that that uh, sort of a, that behavior is this is continuing um, in, in throughout their life and uh, sometimes they you know they just you know f looks like a fight to a general general public general person uh, but uh, you know it's not really a fight but they're just testing their uh, strength and uh, sometimes it's just uh, you know can convert into a, a very aggressive fight also we have seen um, that sort of very aggressive fights also but um, not too often it just convert into a fight and then what this passing is also a young bull uh, not as big as the other two that you have seen earlier so um, what you see here is about five different uh, males also hanging around with this particular herd. Uh, I'm not sure whether they, any uh, receptive female uh, is there. Uh, that is why these uh, four different males are associating this, this, this particular herd. Um, let's see whether there's any, any other uh, special behavior from, uh, from these uh, males, male animals. Uh, Hiruni is asking um, what is the, the best time to visit Kaurula. Uh, Hiruni, the uh, best time is to visit Kaurula uh, from mid-July to mid-October during the peak uh, dry months of, of Sri Lanka. Um, that's the time that most of the animals that are living around uh, Kaurula area just uh, attracted to Kaurula National Park uh, because of the availability of food and water and uh, that is where this whole uh, uh, this um, gathering gathering happens so uh, if you uh, but the gathering peaks in the month of august and september um, because that's a peak dry month and uh, before the you want to make sure that that uh, to visit these parks before the rain uh, usually the main monsoon rain starts uh, in mid mid october so that's the best time Uh, Shanta Premaratna asked whether these animals go to the to the Madhurigiriya side also. Um, probably yes. I would say that they you know they'll go to the to the Somatia Madhurigiriya side also. Uh, but uh, the animals that are we are observing through a GPS collars, uh, they have not travelled to that far yet. Uh, maybe other animals uh, might be going. So with this uh, satellite technology, we we managed to observe two herds of Minneria Kaurula and try to understand their annual uh, movement within these th uh, within these uh, habitats. Uh, 
Uh, Gaya Rupa Singh asking, um, uh, why can't we see more Tuskers? Uh, well, the Tuskers are very rare in Sri Lanka, uh, uh, Gaya, because uh, the only 5 to 6 percent of the males carry tusks here in, in Sri Lanka. Not all the animals have, uh, have tusks, unlike uh, Asi uh, African elephants. I mentioned it um, yesterday also. So very small percentage of male animals, very small percentage of male animals have carry tusks in uh, among Asian elephants. But in Sri Lanka, it is a very small percentage, unfortunately. Uh, Vasanta is asking, are the parks open to the public these days? Uh, Vasanta, yes, parks are open, uh, but uh, visitations are uh, almost zero because uh, no one is no one is traveling. Uh, now you can see um, Chitral and uh, Ch uh, Dr. Fernando is approaching uh, to the grassland area, beautiful uh, habitat from the forest, and uh, uh, see whether we can hear from them. Uh, and this is the terrain that, that you will see, you will enjoy when you come to Kaudula. Obviously, you won't be able to see the aerial view. Uh, because we are getting this special permission to to show you the uh, the habitat and the aerial beauty of of Kaudula National Park, but you can uh, get an idea about how the parks uh, roads are there. Uh, these are not paved roads. These are not very comfortable roads. Only the four wheel drive jeeps can uh, can handle this uh, terrain, and uh, so you know that's the usual habitat, uh, the setting of the park or setting of this. Uh, uh, this uh, elephant country. Uh, this is the painted stork, uh, which is one of the commonest uh, uh, birds in, in, in uh, wetlands of, of Kaudula National Park. Yeah, this is one of the larger uh, large wading birds. Wading birds means we call these birds because they have long uh, legs and they just wade uh, in wading in the in the uh, water. They have a special um, sensitive, very sensitive uh, beaks, uh, special sensors in its beak. If something hit uh, in this in, in their beak and they can identify whether it's a fish or frog or something eatable and then they snap uh, the beak and to uh, to capture it. And you can see very clearly how he is just disturbing all the prey items that are hiding among the among the grasses, uh, just to take them out and 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 uh, catch catch them. So it's a special behavior of this uh, large large wading birds. Uh, Kapila is asking whether uh, whether we can get uh, more information of the uh, uh, GPS tracking or radio coloring process of the uh, elephants. Uh, of course, uh, Kapila, uh, if you are really interested, uh, you know you can you can contact Dr. Prithviraj. Uh, he has been uh, working with elephants uh, in in Sri Lanka for up for the past 30 years, and he has done uh, loads of. Uh, GPS tracking uh, of uh, elephants in many parts of Sri Lanka, including um, in area and Kaudule. And, uh, uh, you know, you can contact him and his organization uh, so that you will learn a uh, lot more. Uh, very interesting uh, parts uh, of elephant movement uh, through the, uh, the real uh, GPS uh, high tech, uh, high technology that we have uh, in, in our repositories to learn about these animals, um, unlike those days, uh, now the technology is very advanced. You can see the special behaviors of, of these particular birds, they s try to dry their, uh, their wings and then sometimes the displays, maybe dis mating displays, so very interesting behaviors. These are the things that you will see um, in, the, in, the, in the parks when you come. Uh, yes, you will focus on large animals, most people, but there are small things also that you can um, see and enjoy these parks. Um, that's the, you know, because we are, the parks are, for, uh, they are they're safe haven for uh, thousands and thousands of species. 
but we focus on keystone species like the elephants and leopards and bears and things like that so that focusing on these big animals and you are what you are doing is protecting larger land area so that the small ones automatically get protected so that's the whole idea of of national park concept Kesha and Gamagi is asking um, the elephants are with the patches on their skin, um, old elephants. Yeah, sometimes they are older, sometimes they are some damages with the fighting and things like that. Uh, scratching, um, you know, damages are there. And, you know, sometimes the, even the small animals also have some of the uh, skin uh, patches. But mostly, yes, uh, old animals have these uh, small um, skin patches. Uh, Vasant is asking, is there any camping uh, sites inside the Minaria and Kaudula National Parks? Uh, Vasant, there's no camping facilities inside the National Park. There's one bungalow in Minaria National Park which can be uh, reserved from the Department of Wildlife mm -hmm. Conservation, but not within the Kaudula National Park. Um, but uh, no camping grounds because I think the too many elephants in these uh, two parks, and that is why the authorities are reluctant to provide any camping grounds in this. Uh, these two national parks. Yeah, the Chitral and uh, Dr. Fernando is uh, slowly approaching uh, to the, you know, they are in the grassland now. Uh, they are in search of any other elephant herds uh, in, in this area. So let's see uh, what they can spot. And, and that's the scene that you can see um, when they come out from the forest and uh, that's the open grassland uh, and the uh, Kaudulula tank, a beautiful scenery, it's amazing scenery. And just imagine just uh, adding elephant into this scenery uh, gives you a... a Huh? Yeah. 
Yeah. So we are seeing a a, a group of adjutant stock on that tree. So that's right. uh, that's interesting. Yeah. The this is the lesser adjutant, uh, isn't it, Chitra? Yes. Uh, this is the biggest uh, stock in Sri Lanka. Yes. The yeah. tallest. This, of course, probably the black neck stock. Black neck stock. If you're really lucky, you might get one in Yala. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I s they've been around in the last two months. Let's go and see in another right. seven, eight days. Right. Now, right. now this chap is almost uh, somewhat related to the Maribu stocks in Africa. Right. Similar. They are kind of uh, had that uh, scavenger habit. Yeah. So um, yeah. So they are also a common sight in areas like Minneri and Kaudul, and it's it's a pretty very impressive bird. Yeah. With a very big wingspan, and now there's there's one Brahmini kite and another one coming up. So we yeah. have now three adjutants and two Brahmini kites on the same three tree. Kites. So the local uh, Sinhali's uh, name is quite funny, actually. Oh, and on the, in the background you can hear <laughs> the, the white belly. <laughs> so that's that's a quite a combination, right? So the adjutants, Brahmins, and then now the. White bellied calling. Right. There could be a nest site there. There's a couple it of. Probably is. Yeah. Yes. So the single is named for the adjutant is almost funny. They call it the Tattamana Koka. Okay. Almost uh, like uh, if I do a oh, crude kind of like this. insulation. <laughs> 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 so, it's almost like the, the, the stalk that doesn't have hair <laughs> on his head. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't mean to offend you. <laughs> so the Brahmini kite is kind of a small version of the bald eagle, you yeah. know, the white head yeah. and the brown yeah. feathers. But uh, so both these are actually, they are kind of uh, associated with water, yeah. even the Brahmini kite because they do a lot of fishing, okay. although they are not uh, particularly limited as uh, fish seagulls. Generally, uh, so like the marabus and the adjutants, uh, they are and even the ibises, so their head and neck is bare, they don't have feathers because yeah. uh, so that it doesn't get uh, dirtied and uh, when they they scavenge, yeah. scavenging and things like that. So, so I mean, uh, 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 a physical feature that some kind, you know, draws a parallel with the vultures so absolutely, that they can stay clean as they exactly. scavenge on, exactly. on old meat. Right, right. Oh, this is the aerial uh, drone footage, again what you see um, in, in Kaurula National Park. Some of the beautiful trees and open grasslands, the water receded and then the grassland is opened. Uh, where this is the ideal pictures and ideal for, for elephants. Uh, this is what they are looking for. This is what they, uh, they uh, just love to come out every, every day. And uh, visitors also can enjoy this picturesque park. Uh, you can see the aerial footages. And um, I just wanted to remind our, our visitor viewers uh, that these aerial footages are uh, we are bringing from far uh, far above uh, the in the air uh, without disturbing any animals. Uh, that's the permission. That's a special permission that we got. Otherwise, you are not allowed to uh, use drones in the national parks in in Sri Lanka. Um, highly restricted. But this particular uh, streaming, we got a very special permission uh, because of uh, there's no visitors, and um, and then we bring these uh, these uh, footage some um, you know you know five to six hundred meters above the ground, and there's absolutely zero disturbances uh, for for the animals. And and this is uh, a peacock, uh, one of the commonest birds in in the dry part of, of Sri Lanka. And uh, this is a beautiful male, and uh, you can see that uh, they are eating, um, you know, leaves. And but they more, they prefer to eat, uh, you know, insect uh, in the grasslands. Uh, but they do eat uh, leaves, uh, part of the leaves and flowers uh, once in a while. Okay. Um, and uh, it's one of the commonest and one of the most beautiful birds. birds. So big and slightly overcast and cool evening. Uh, few elephants have come out, Doctor Day. Right. So this this looks like a small family group. Yeah. 
So you can see that we have about uh, four adult females and uh, four juveniles and one is uh, pretty much a newborn baby. Yeah, how, uh, how many uh, weeks or months do you think that newborn baby is? It's pretty much newborn, I mean, so it's probably a couple of weeks at most or less. Yeah. So, the, um, and then one of the journals is a tusker. Yeah, it looks, uh, looks a lovely young tusker, three, four to four and a half years old. Right. So, so here we have basically uh, four females and uh, four young. And so the ratio is much less than what we saw yesterday, yeah. which was about one to two. Here it's about one to one. So um, well, maybe it's a group that's not doing that great for whatever reason. Oh, this is again the aerial footage of the of the uh, Kaudula National Park, Kaudula Reservoir. Um, you can spot some uh, some birds are just flying across, but we just wanted to bring the um, the what do you call the scenery, the scenic beauty of the park uh, that that the visitors will get when they visit uh, Kaudula National Park. And. Uh, I just want to, uh, you know, answer uh, Emily Colombo uh, ask a um, few questions. Uh, one is, um, what time is the the parks are open? Uh, Emily usually parks are open from six a.m. to six p.m. And uh, she also asked whether you need guides to go to the parks. Of course, uh, guides are available uh, with the Na wildlife department, Department of Wildlife Conservation. If the guides are not available, uh, some of the local park jeep drivers are well, well experienced and then the park officials usually allow uh, them to go to the park without any guides. So if you come here, uh, if there's no guides, uh, you are okay, you know, because some most of the jeep drivers are as good as guides of the park, wildlife department and they know the park very well, they know the terrain, they know the animals, uh, they'll follow all the safety precautions. Uh, for you to enjoy the park and also um, she asked whether there's any, any emergency for the visitors there are times they use their hind uh, legs to lovely. great use uh, isn't it I just spotted the the, the the elephant in the middle almost kicking that little egret <laughs> for whatever reason it probably annoyed it right. uh, so as much as they, they don't uh, seem to have too much of agility of those hind legs, they do uh, raise them at a precarious angle when they get mad. Yeah, absolutely. They can kick back very, uh, very high. Yeah. Uh, as you say, it's uh, very surprisingly. They are very agile, although they don't look like it. So probably some of these uh, adult females are in late pregnancy, for example the one right behind. Yes. So probably very soon there will be a few more young ones in this group. Another interesting feature about um, young adults is that sometimes uh, when a mother has a calf and it goes out to be five to seven years and then the mother has another very junior young calf the first calf becomes very protective of their their newborn don't they yeah so i mean um, so as we said uh, females live in groups with their young and uh, the related uh, other females so one big question is what is the advantage for elephants in living in a group? Yeah. Um, and the males clearly go off on their own because that is more advantageous to them. Once they are attain a particular size, then uh, there is uh, very little danger to them. They are the biggest uh, animals around. Yeah. So then they strike out on their own. 
but the females continue to live in groups. So um, there are many theories that have been put forward as to what the advantages that could be to elephants in living in groups. And one of the things that has been discussed is the possibility that it helps look after the young ones. Yeah. 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 But uh, it's really, uh, again, there's a lot of uh, unknowns and it's still not very clear what the real advantages are for female elephants to continue to live in these uh, social groups. They do resemble, see, uh, we've done a bit of whale watching in the last 10 years. Uh, mm -hmm. And now, as, you, as we speak, you can see the young uh, uh, male who is approaching the herd, who is uh, growing up to be a lovely tusker. Uh, and that's another phenomenon I wanted to talk to you about, Doctor. Uh, I mean, amongst African elephants, uh, you see uh, a vast majority of them, a high 90%, both male and female, having tusks. And uh, if you look at the Asian elephants in India, uh, high 80% of all males would carry the precious commodity ivory. But amongst the Sri Lankan elephants, as you said, the Elephas maximus maximus, we have a, a very small percentage of males uh, who are blessed to carry ivory. Uh, can, we, can you explain that uh, on a genetical side? Yeah, so the, I mean, the possibilities are that it is something natural and uh, due to genetics. So, for example, um, m many thousands or hundreds of thousands of years ago, elephants came to Sri Lanka through India. Oh, what you see here is again a, a, a drone footage, beautiful drone footage. Uh, we apologize that the, the voice uh, of Dr. Pritiraj has got interrupted unexpectedly. Um, our apologies. And uh, this is again, um, you see our two jeeps on the ground and, and see the picturesque uh, Kaudula National Park, Kaudula uh, Resort. And, um, and uh, these are the white lines are the jeep tracks. Uh, that uh, that are using for um, safari vehicles uh, to see the to see the elephants. So there's no real disturbances to the forest from the uh, from the road construction. The roads are all on the on the grassland mostly. Uh, Tarak um, asked. Uh, um, what is the um, the interesting part about the Sri Lankan uh, subspecies, which is the Elephas maximus maximus? Uh, we are Tarka, the, the elephants have, uh, you know, migrated to, to Sri Lanka from India, you know, maybe 10,000, 15,000 years ago, uh, because land bridge, bridge between Sri Lanka and India uh, discontinued uh, uh, 10,000 years ago. Uh, but after that, they evolved as a as a uh, separate species without any land connection, without any connection to the in mainland Indian elephants. So, with the time, um, you know, because we are uh, we are an island, so you know, our elephants will become a sort of a separate species as the time goes by. Um, it, that's a genetic uh, di uh, genetic difference between the the Asian, sorry, Indian mainland elephant and the Sri Lankan elephants. So the, that analysis have shown that uh, the Sri Lankan elephants uh, can be considered as a separate species now because of this isolation is giving special uh, genetic uh, makeup for their uh, identity. So that is why uh, Sri Lankan elephants considered as a subspecies of, of Asian elephants, which is scientifically named as a Elephas maximus maximus.
Upul Bandar is asking what is the pregnancy uh, period of the of the elephant it's about 22 months uh, uh, so uh, you know it's a long gestation period obviously it's a large animal and a uh, lot of our viewers is asking uh, the numbers of uh, of animals you know how many peacocks are there how many elephants are there how many uh, foxes are there, sorry jackals are there um, you know, in, it, it's it's difficult to get the numbers of of wildlife. Of course, people always would like to you know see how many of the of them are there, how many of them are there. You know that sort of thing. That that's a general you know interest. But in 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 in, in Sri Lankan context, you can see uh, counting these animals are extremely difficult unless you have a, a visitor who is uh, who is dedicated his research on these particular animals. Uh, they can do some. Uh, not really a counting animal, but at least to get an estimation of the population, estimation of how many animals are there in one particular given area, uh, that can be done. But again, there's a huge error because then you have to spend a lot of time on counting animals. And uh, that's uh, sometimes it's, it's uh, you know, there's no use of it. Why, you know, when, when you get the number, what do you mean it? You know, how do you do it? Whether it's a population low or high or whatever it is. And uh, that is why, you know, the counting numbers, counting wild animals is, is extremely difficult. And uh, some parks, uh, they do it, but in Sri Lanka, the numbers are, we don't get, uh, you don't count uh, every and each and every animal uh, in these, these protected areas. But the best thing is for us to protect the, the habitat uh, which all of these animals are living in and it doesn't matter the numbers doesn't matter and they will they will survive and they will have the uh, the entire area as their home so that's the idea of of protect protected area Yeah, these are the you know jeep tracks that you can see. Uh, one uh, another viewer asked, uh, I think Ravi, uh, uh, Ravi is asking uh, whether the safari vehicles ever get lost in in uh, because there's no paths. Uh, well, uh, no, uh, uh, Ravi, um, safari jeeps. I mean, sometimes safari jeeps get uh, stuck in the mud during the the rainy time, rainy uh, days. Uh, but never got lost uh, because uh, you know you can contact the park officer you can talk they'll t uh, they have the contact with the their uh, uh, you know um, f other safari jeep drivers and they'll come to help you uh, if you get in the, stuck in the mud or anything uh, but never get lost because they know um, the way out way in and out of the park so they will experience they have been uh, driving around this area for a long long time and uh, don't worry about it yeah so uh, never got lost. Well, Anthony is asking a very sp interesting question whether the elephant pass in northern part of Sri Lanka has uh, any significance with, with elephants. Uh, obviously, the elephant pass area, uh, there are some elephants in that area. Uh, I don't know whether, uh, you know, elephant pass means uh, they, there may have been a good elephant corridor that elephants are passing from this side to the northern side. But uh, way towards the northern side of Sri Lanka, uh, we don't have elephants. I think beyond, uh, I, I can't remember the exact uh, point that you wouldn't get uh, elephants. But uh, way further in the northern part of, of Sri Lanka, in the Jaffna Peninsula and the Mana Peninsula, that area you wouldn't get, uh, you don't get elephants. But uh, beyond Vaunia area, you don't get elephants. So the Vaunia area, I would say that's the area that you will uh, get elephants. Again, uh, painted stalks, uh, one of the commonest. Uh, but today, actually, the numbers are very less. Yeah, yesterday, we have seen large uh, flock, uh, large flock of uh, of uh, painted stalks. Today, we are seeing only uh, you know few birds here and there. Uh, that because uh, that may be connected to the to the heavy rains that uh, heavy rains of uh, last last night and uh, some of the herons uh, some of the uh, other stocks also there but very small numbers now they're feeding today actually uh,
Oh, it's it's very fun to watch there how they disturb the water and the muddy areas to get the uh, hidden uh, fish and uh, frogs out uh, from the grassy grassy areas, uh, so that they can easily catch them uh, with their sensitive uh, beaks. Uh, it's a tough call, no? I mean, just imagine how to you know you have to catch something to to survive. So you put a lot of energy, a lot of time, and a lot of effort to get something. Oh, this is a fish owl, brown fish owl. Um, yesterday also we had spotted one, and today is also we have seen one. Uh, very good. And uh, again, um, this one is one of the commonest uh, common owls that you will encounter in uh, in Kaudula National Park. Um, this guy, you don't you don't see this owl in the open grassland areas. But there are forest patches that you're approaching to the grasslands. That's the type of habitats you would see a uh, brown fish owl. So, the, so keep an eye on, uh, you know, when you're driving in the park uh, along the main road uh, in the forested areas, and they might be hiding in, in the, among the bushes. And, uh, but daytime, sometimes they, they have an eyesight. There's a, you know, common mis common understanding is the, that uh, they can't see in during the daytime. No, that is not true. They can see in the daytime, they just fly around easily. Um, but uh, daytime, they are reluctant to fly, but they just stay uh, in on one branch and then you know rest a little bit. Uh, but nighttime, they are very active. Beautiful uh, owl, and it's a larger owl, uh, one of the largest owls in, in, in Sri Lanka, a uh, brown fish owl. Um, Emma Lee, um, uh, one of our viewers, uh, sent a very long message. I think very uh, emotional uh, message. I would, I have to take this one very seriously uh, because she's she's requesting all our Sri Lankans, all our Sri Lankan citizens, to protect what we are seeing here in in Kaudula National Park. Not only in Kaudula National Park, all of our uh, wild habitats, because the tourism is not going to depend. Uh, d uh, tourism is depending on this natural uh, wealth what what Sri Lanka has so it's extremely important the Emma Lee thank you very much for for, for bringing that up and uh, your long message and I'm, I'm I just took the sense of your message and 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 I take this opportunity to uh, to elaborate on that Emma uh, obviously Sri Lanka has a long history of conservation and we have a great respect towards uh, the plants animals and water and everything uh, it's part of Buddhist teaching of Sri Lanka and also uh, our long history of, of conservation that our lives are embedded to the to the natural resources of, of Sri Lanka uh, but at the same time I also would uh, would like to um, request all the Sri Lankans uh, who has some sort of a uh, love for the nature and please look at these things because our tourism is totally depending on these resources. People wouldn't come to um, see 
uh, you know, now uh, we know that majority of the tourists that come here to Sri Lanka to see the to the see the natural beauty of of Sri Lanka, which you don't see anywhere else in, on the planet, and uh, scenery is like what you see here is is in Kaudula today, and uh, elephants. Uh, I don't think any place on the planet you will see such a beautiful pictures place uh, with the with the elephants that are uh, freely uh, moving around and and that is very important so thank you very much Emali uh, once again and uh, you know see see the see the habitat what you see and uh, the forest and the you know tiny grasslands and this is ideal for elephants you know you see the two elephants uh, that are walking uh, on the uh, on the jeep pathway uh, and uh, you can see how freely they are moving around and uh, they're taking the same path as as the tourists or the visitors to the park and uh, they know that there's no harm from the visitors for, uh, from the visitors and they have plenty of land to go and hide if they really want um, but to come out in the in the open uh, to feed and to enjoy the the surrounding uh, and enjoy drink water is is important part of their survival so that is uh, why these these habitats these parks are extremely important uh, for their lives and now it is part of the big part of uh, Sri Lanka tourism as well as Emma pointed out. Uh, Keshani Gamage is asking what he, uh, what does their diet comprise of the ele elephants I suppose she's asking um, you know they are they are of course you know um, they eat uh, you know green vegetable not like you and me you know we like meat but they are hundred uh, percent grass eaters uh, f you know leaf eaters elephants uh, but they do prefer uh, grasses was than than the the large trees. Uh, of course, when there are no grasses, uh, they would prefer to eat uh, the broad leaves, uh, which is uh, the forest trees. Uh, but they prefer grass. That is why some of the elephants actually uh, do raid crops like the the rice and uh, cane sugar cane and things like that. Uh, but they prefer grasslands, grass uh, grass uh, than the trees. The hundred percent uh, vegetarians. Uh, Upul Bandar is asking um, whether there are too many visitors are uh, actually a um, threat for the long run of, of uh, elephants in, in Mineria. Um, obviously, you know, too much of anything is, you know, is not good, good for nothing. And um, we are trying to, I think the authorities are trying to restrict the number of visitors to the, to the parks. Uh, but it's a, it's a it's a tough call for for Sri countries like Sri Lanka because we are depending on uh, tourism money uh, uh, for as our, our one of the main uh, revenues to to Sri Lanka. Uh, so and also a uh, lot of people are interested to visit Sri Lanka. So it's very difficult for us to uh, find find a line. You know how to control tourism and uh, for places like Mineria and Kaudul, uh, you know the number of jeeps are not not a not a big problem because these are uh, these open grasslands when you come out in the in the uh, to the grasslands uh, you can easily watch them very freely you know keep your distance uh, from the elephants and they they'll they'll freely move around and you will see the all all the behaviors what you see here today uh, you can see them so i mean it's it's the authorities job is to look at uh, these numbers
Oh, that what you can see here is uh, some of the herds of buffaloes, and buffaloes also get into the to the open grasslands, or they love to eat uh, the short grass. So you can see um, larger herds of of buffaloes in in uh, both Mineria and Kaudula National Parks. Vasanta is asking how many kilograms of food that usually the elephants consume. It's about 150 kilograms of food uh, that they need to uh, consume per day. So that's a lot of food, huh, Vasanta? Uh, just imagine if we eat 150 kilograms of food per day, finish, we'll be like, uh, like elephants. But uh, yes, that's the type of, uh, uh, you know, load of food that they want uh, every single day. That is why protecting these kind of large uh, grasslands are extremely, extremely important. Uh, Satish Tissoisa is asking, uh, just to explain the pigmentation of elephants. Uh, well, Satish, uh, very difficult to, sometimes the, the wild elephants, the pigmentation is not visible most of the time because they're covered in the mud. Uh, but some people say that it's, it's because of the, due to the aging uh, that you get the uh, pigmentation. Uh, maybe, you know, related to the diet. But we don't know what it is. Uh, but most animals doesn't have the pigmentation, but some animals do have pigmentation. Mostly, uh, pigmentation come on the front side of uh, an upper side part of the trunk, and also the ears. Uh, so male elephants do tend to have more pigmentation. Uh, so you know, we we really don't know the the reason to get you know why this pigmentation is there, but it is there. Some people, you know, sometimes we try to identify some of the animals from the pigmentation, but it's not that easy uh, because they always covered with the mud. Gihad uh, Hashim uh, asked uh, that uh, some of the, uh, the visitors who would like to uh, visit Sri Lanka from Egypt, uh, especially to, su to see uh, elephants, and then the camping facilities inside the national parks. Uh, Gihad, uh, yes, uh, some parks uh, we do have camping facilities like Yala, Udoalawe, uh, Kaudu, uh, sorry, not Kaudu and Mineria, but some, uh, the Baskamu and things like that. But uh, we do not have camping facilities in Minneria and Kaudul yet, uh, and because of the larger uh, animals, large population of elephants are, are residing in these two parks. But other parks, yes, we do have camping facilities uh, that visitors can come and uh, set up their camps and enjoy the wilderness there. I just want to remind uh, our viewers again uh, about our, our competition uh, that uh, will be held. So, um, you know, you can win, um, you know, only for the, this is only for the 
our foreign viewers, foreign international travelers to Sri Lanka to win holidays. So please log in to www.srilanka.travel backslash wildlife stream, wildlife stream to win holidays to Sri Lanka. So please do join the competition uh, to uh, win uh, travel to Sri Lanka. Vasanta asked, uh, do elephants uh, sleep, uh, lie on the ground to sleep? Uh, very interesting question, uh, Vasanta. Sometimes they do lie on the ground to sleep, uh, but most of the time they just lean on a tree or something and just have a quick, uh, quick sleep. Uh, but they, are, they, don't, they, don't, they don't have a long sleep, long sleeps like us, you know, you and me. We love to sleep, you know, 10 to 8 to 10 hours a day, but no, not for elephants. Elephants, uh, they, they are, their sleeping time is very short, and sometimes they do lie and, and sleep. Um, and one time, actually, I came across some of the elephants are snoring also. I just try to imagine the elephant snoring. All right, good luck. It's not a common behavior, but yes. this guy has figured out that the the grass still underwater in the inundated area is still good. Yeah. So now he is rooting out the grass underwater, washing the mud off, yeah. and eating it because uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, this is the first time I'm seeing this behavior. Uh, you see elephants feeding on reeds and yeah. things, but yeah. uh, this is something he has worked out for himself. <laughs> it's very smart. This is what we discussed yesterday about these, uh, you know, amazingly intelligent animals that has a learned intelligence. You know, they figure things out as they go. Exactly. And uh, uh, if the camera is rolling, you could now see. Uh, yeah, you can see the elephant now washing off the mud, splashing <laughs> yes. the grass, and then you know, just puts it in its mouth. So I guess this area must have been uh, freshly been submerged yes. so the grass is still good so he's uh, taking it out and nicely washing it it's somewhat of a, uh, a more regular thing in in Vilpatu national park where you have a couple of elephants like this just right. a few right. uh, who's found a way to break the 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 weeds uh, that grows under the natural lakes there okay but here when you have so much of food around uh, this guy is so smart, he's found his own diet. <laughs> there you go. That's beautiful. And just in front of him are a whole lot of uh, pygmy cormorants, which are yeah. one of the water birds that do very well because of all this system of uh, tanks, lakes and uh, canals and all that. It also shows you how what a versatile uh, appendage the trunk is. Oh, yes. You know, so Absolutely. even underwater he can you know search for the grass uh, by feel. Yes. The end of the trunk has very sensitive hairs, yeah. so it's very sensitive to touch, and they can figure out what they're touching from, uh, at the by the end of the trunk. And I don't know what happens to the smell when the trunk is underwater. But he clearly is able to feel around, feel around and uh, because I don't, I doubt that he can actually see the grass. Yes. Uh, standing there like that, 
but by touch he can probably figure out uh, where the grass yeah. is and pick it out. He seems to be standing in around two and a half feet of water. Yeah, yeah. So not more uh, that's the sense of feel must be uh, very, very sensitive. Exactly. So here again is a single elephant because he is an adult male. So adult males are most of the time they are solitary. These guys, you know, do their, they, they learn to experience it rather than to believe that they don't uh, visualize what's going to happen and, and adapt change like humans. But what he's doing now with all this grass here, find, finding something new is like uh, a, a young uh, human who will uh, go from a, a one restaurant to another trying to taste something else. <laughs> so yeah, maybe it's the submerged grass tastes different, a little bit aged. <laughs> huh? Oh, you see another herd of elephants are just coming out of the park, out of the forest, and uh, oh, they are actually coming a little faster than the other herds. Uh, there's no fear of of anything, I guess. So let's see how what they what they do. Oh, while this uh, fantastic uh, sort of group is coming to the to the grassland, I just wanted to uh, to answer Andre Thiel's question, and it's a very valid question and it's a very important question about uh, the human conflict, human elephant conflict here in Sri Lanka. Uh, Andre, it's a, it's a very complex situation. Unfortunately, the environmental problem, which is the elephant uh, uh, habitat. Uh, problem, land man management problem has converted into a social and political uh, problem here in Sri Lanka, mostly in the dry, dry part of Sri Lanka. As you correctly pointed out, uh, you know, all around Sri Lanka, human elephant conflict uh, has become has become a mainstream uh, uh, talking point, a mainstream discussion point. In fact, the President of Sri Lanka has uh, newly appointed as a, a task force to look at uh, some of the solutions and the authorities are doing uh, what they can do uh, to uh, to you know protect human lives and uh, also the elephant lives uh, last year you know 2019 uh, we have reached to an unprecedented level of of uh, elephant deaths uh, 400 plus elephant deaths uh, due to this uh, this conflict and it is terrible when you're looking at uh, these numbers and here you know 70 to 80 uh, humans also die every year but it's 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 a basic matter of of land management you know how do you uh, deal with this uh, these elephants these large mammals and that has that that most of the sri lankans are proud of but at the same time uh, it's a human survival uh, agriculture lands are expanding uh, new agricultural areas are are being uh, introduced and the forests are being cleared so that the elephant doesn't have anywhere to go and some people argue that the, the elephant numbers are high in Sri Lanka, but um, that based on, on the land availability for them. So, uh, you know, anybody can, you know, many people have different opinions on that. But at the same time, the human elephant conflict has uh, absolutely no easy answer. And uh, you have to find many different um, answers, many different uh, uh, approaches to to uh, to deal with this uh, now dr prithviraj and the team is is trying to see whether testing whether the hu uh, the coexistence model which is um, how to how to coexist with the elephants in the conflict areas 
uh, and see uh, whether we can release some of the la the agriculture lands for the elephants in non harvesting seasons so these kind of uh, community fencing type of programs that there's no permanent fence but you put a, a, a electric fence around your your uh, land area your household your village and something like that rather than um, protect uh, keep trying to keep the elephants inside the protected area is not going to work you know we have tried for last 70 years uh, it's not going to work uh, because these giants are very smart they know how to break fences they know how to break uh, other things and uh, they know how to uh, get around with it so because of that i think we need to find a novel uh, concept novel methods uh, to deal with these things um, and i i am sure that the, the all the uh, sri lankans are very well aware about it and then we need public support also because it's it's a basically the Land, land management issue, nothing else. It's a simple land management issue. Uh, Keshani Gamage is asking whether there's any um, any uh, human support uh, for the uh, sick or injured uh, elephant inside the national parks. Um, yes, Keshani, the Department of Wildlife Conservation has a veterinary service uh, and all the veterinarians are 24-7 are on duty. And then if there's any notification from public or anybody, uh, they'll come and try to uh, attend to the, to the issue. And uh, so they have been uh, working very hard uh, to uh, to uh, uh, for the safety of these these elephants, but most of the time uh, very difficult to uh, to uh, save elephant lives from gunshot wounds or any other wounds. Uh, some of the natural deaths also there, obviously for aging and things like that. And uh, so, um, but there is a there is a system uh, in the Department of Wildlife Conservation. We are bringing another uh, uh, images of another uh, brown fish owl. Uh, yeah, as I said earlier, the brown fish owls are somewhat, uh, somewhat common, uh, commonest owls in in uh, Minneria and Caudal areas. Uh, he's very curious about the cameras and 
and he knows that uh, he's been filmed and uh, he's well aware about it and that is why he's paying uh, attention to the to the crew Shanta um, posted a question about uh, the elephant accidents. Uh, very, very good point, Shanta. And uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, train accidents uh, and uh, that a lot of elephant deaths due to the train accidents and some of the uh, road accidents too. Um, and he asked, "What can we do?" And of course, we have, you know, a lot of people have initiated a lot of initiatives uh, to reduce this number of deaths of elephants from due to the accidents. And uh, one of the key uh, uh, initiative is to is, is to increase the awareness uh, of the engine drivers, uh, the uh, and also the uh, the drivers. And we posted some of the road signs where the elephants are usually cross roads and things like that. So, uh, best you know, my best advice, my request is for all the drivers in Sri Lanka to pay attention to the. Uh, road signs and things like that when the, when where the uh, elephants are common commonly cross roads uh, what you see here is the uh, crested hawk eagle uh, sorry crested serpent eagle um, again one of the commonest eagles in in dry zone national park crested serpent eagle Although it says, uh, you know, its its name says crested serpent. Of course, he's taking uh, many other uh, prey items also, uh, like the smaller prey items. Uh, again, another aerial shot of, of elephants. Uh, you can see how far we are filming uh, because these elephants are not even aware that that they are uh, they have been filmed uh, from the above. And uh, this is the type of height that we have used for drones, uh, not to disturb the animals. Uh, look at look at how freely they are moving. They're taking uh, their usual pathways, uh, so that. Uh, that we take these these uh, beautiful drone shots uh, for our uh, for the benefit of our weavers, uh, and also you can see some uh, uh, lesser adjutants and uh, two lesser adjutants and one uh, one white neck stalk is also uh, re uh, resting on this uh, dead tree, and it's what a what a sight you know what a beautiful scenery uh, you can see the elephants and the birds and the forest and grasslands. And the uh, minery, uh, sorry, caudal tank uh, in the backdrop. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, that that last bit take here, man. Check one. so much of food around uh, uh, this uh, you know adult male finds something different it right. really almost resembles uh, a young human uh, who's had enough of chinese cuisine suddenly <laughs> testing <laughs> a german one or something right. like that is it yeah i guess i mean uh, so this must be uh, most likely a freshly submerged area it is and so for so the grass that is there under water should be the same as this yeah. but one possibility is that because now the ground will be very soft yeah. because it's been underwater for a couple of days maybe. Yeah. So when they pull out the grass, 
they will get it with the roots. Yeah. So the roots could be having more protein or different nutrients yeah. than the upper the what is above ground. Yeah. So that that is one possibility why he's doing that. But uh, clearly, so he's uh, figured out something new. So that's that's the thing about elephants. They are always, you know, they are able to adapt to new conditions, uh, figure out things that are new, figure out new ways of doing the old things. Yeah. So in that way, I think elephants are probably one of the most adaptable oh. of animals. You know, if you think about it, you know, elephants have never been domesticated. Yeah because elephants are, have been generally always captured from the wild yes. and tamed. Yes. So more, basically captive elephants are not considered domestic animals, yeah. but only tamed wild animals. Mm. That is because you can do it with elephants. If you look at other domestic animals, domestication for things like chickens, dogs, uh, cattle has happened once or twice in the whole history of civilization going back thousands of years mm. but with elephants we continue to do that every every time practically so because they are so amazingly adaptable i is something we discussed while in binaria for the listeners who uh, our viewers who may not have uh, uh, watched that session i i like to kind of bring back that little discussion we had yesterday about how elephants uh, are born with about 35 percent of their brain mass uh, compared to their bodies and my scientists believe that humans are even less there they have only about 28 percent of their brain mass at birth All right. uh, so that just shows that like humans comparatively elephants have smaller brains as they are born and they'll they'll grow their capacity over the years thus uh, facilitating learned or, 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 or acquired intelligence. Exactly. So, yeah, so they, there is a lot of uh, learning in an elephant's life. So that is probably why even males tend to stay with the herd for about 10 years, yes. the first formative years of their life, yeah. because that is the time they are learning a lot of things. So yeah. similar to people, um, there is also in elephants what is called cultural evolution, yeah. because they learn from each other and pass it down uh, to the younger generations. Yeah. So it is for elephants particularly, it is important to have the older animals mm. in elephant society. Yes. So that they pass on the gained information yeah. to the young animals. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's even more profound, I believe, in African herds or the desert elephants where, uh, you know, the senior matriarchs will know how to negotiate this herd through hundreds of miles in search of that next uh, spring of water exactly the most difficult period so that that mental map is not passed on by teaching but by following the leader right right so, so it, it's yeah it's they experience it and that experience can only be provided by the older animals in that society so even though males are kind of solitary they still do have association there is a male society among elephants yeah. And males also learn from each other. Yes. And actually, Piyamal just said that they were watching another, the single tusker, yes. doing the same behavior. Exactly. So this is a yeah. newly evolving behavior. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this so, and that is directly related to this uh, submergence and resurgence. Yeah. The the you know inflow and outflow of water. The transaction between the water levels and land. Yeah. So again, and, uh, a connection with the what we are doing, and how elephants are adapting to it. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it is uh, really amazing and this close connection yeah. that elephants and people have in Sri Lanka. So yeah, elephants uh, mimic so much of behavior. Now, you said that, uh, you know, these it's adult males sometimes congregate with little groups. It's almost like a boys club amongst us, isn't it? Exactly. Uh, in fact, yeah. some researchers uh, call them bachelor herds uh, in the African yeah. context. And yes, we do see that in Sri Lanka also, where there are some association of individual males. And uh, so the general thinking is that those groupings are not as strong or as permanent yeah. as the female groups yeah. that we see, because the female groups are based on relatedness. Yes. They are associating with their close relations. Yeah. Now, we don't really know whether the associating males tend to be related or less related or more related. Yeah. So these are things that we would really like to know in the future.
it, it, to me, uh, uh, being a non-scientist, I believe the association of males looks more like an association of convenience. Uh, very to likely, learn, learn very likely. from each other, right. a bunch together, raid crops. But then, as long as somebody, one of them, feel strong enough, they'll break away and uh, you know uh, go on their own journeys. And right. I, it's it's very likely that they don't spend all the time together, but yeah. only part of the time. Uh, but it is interesting to see whether they will group up with any male or whether it's particular males yes. that uh, come together. So this is one of the things that we are studying here. So every time we see somebody like this, one of the males or a group of males, we take photographs and we identify them individually. So, you know, Chitra, elephants are like people. You know, each one looks different. <laughs> <laughs> so if you look at them, you know, closely enough, so for example, if you look at this guy in the water, so you can see on the ear, there's a fold on top of the ear. Yeah. And that's usually outside. Yeah. But the extent of that fold, the shape of that, yeah. it all differs from animal to animal. And then the ear bends on itself. And that we call the primary and secondary folds. Yeah. And that is also different from animal to animal. And then he has a very clear um, zone of depigmentation, lighter yeah. colored, a uh, very nice uh, pattern yes. on his ears. Yes. So again, now that is actually uh, more prominent in Sri Lankan elephants. As you know, there are four, four subspecies of Asian elephants. Yeah. And uh, so the Sri Lankan elephant is actually the type species. The, it's, so that the Sri Lankan subspecies is Elephas maximus maximus. Yeah. So it is, tends to be a little bit more prominent in our elephants, this depigmentation. Um, yesterday at Min area, I think we saw even a juvenile with a trunk base that was depigmented. And, but the depigmentation tends to increase with time and may be a little bit more prominent in some of the males. Now, why that happens, we really don't know. And it's another one of these mysteries yeah, about this, mystery. you know, yeah, very yeah. mysterious animal. Yeah, you know, the, 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 some, some locals believe it's, it's to do with their diet, but it's uh, not proven scientifically, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think it's the diet because it affects them uh, individually. Some have a lot of depigmentation, some yeah. have less. Um, and it, it may be something to do with the environment, but it also may be something to do with the genetics. Genetics, I believe, yeah. All right, Pima, let's be... Drive forward and look for more elephants. Abhiyam Pima. Hmm? Um, I just wanted to take the uh, the uh, question from Venetia Junkir, uh, and uh, she's asking um, the differences of of African and Asian elephants. Uh, of course, uh, one thing is African elephants are confined to um, to uh, African continent. Uh, Asian elephants are confined to the Asia, um, Asian continent. Um, Venetia, that um, uh, genus uh, uh, the Africans are belongs to is called uh, Loxodonta, uh, and the Asian elephants genus is called Elephas. So that is how you scientifically um, differentiate these two. And uh, there are vast difference of their size. Um, of course, uh, their weight, um, the African elephant is 6,000 kilograms versus Asian elephant is 2,000 kilograms. And uh, the height is about average adult uh, Asian elephant is about 8 uh, feet and, and African elephant is about uh, 11 feet. And, and that is how you differentiate. Uh, and then the you know, African elephants, both male and female, both carry tusks whereas the Asian elephant don't.
Um, Vasanta is asking whether there's any sort of a, he has seen a, a small wound on one of these elephants, one of these male bulls. Um, yes, Vasanta, sometimes you will see some of the wounds uh, uh, and then, you know, they fight. They sometimes they hit on logs and things like that and some of the wounds are there. Uh, when they age, of course, these wounds are, uh, it takes a little bit of time to heal. And uh, sometimes you may have noticed uh, some of the gunshot uh, wounds that are healed already. I have seen on, on some of the males also. Um, so, you know, that is, it's, it's a part of the, uh, of the elephants in Sri Lanka because they, some of the males just do uh, tend to uh, raid crops and then uh, they do get some uh, shots once in a while. But some shots are not, uh, not deadly, uh, they are not fatal and then they just carry uh, the small bullets in their, in their body and then life is continuing. Uh, that's how it is. Uh, that is why the authorities are trying to address this human-elephant conflict uh, for the safety of uh, both elephants and, and humans. Uh, Vasanta asked uh, whether that the earlier footage that whether the two bull elephants are fighting. Uh, yes, Vasanta, I, I explained earlier also sometimes it's a, it's a ritualistic fight, uh, not really a uh, really aggressive fight each other, and obviously they're testing their strength uh, each other, and but uh, it, you know they don't fight to the death. You know sometimes it can be very aggressive, um, but usually uh, you know they just you know do. You know, strength test and and they just go um, go away each other and then uh, fight is over. Uh, that's how it is. Uh, that scene was that. These are some of the smaller herds are uh, actually just uh, feeding uh, and moving slowly. Uh, right uh, by the edge of the water and there's a little animal, tiny uh, new calf uh, just uh, under the shade of uh, mother's tummy is also moving around and they rarely come out uh, at, the, at this age of, of uh, their life and uh, the mothers are very protective, extremely protective uh, they just let uh, the little juveniles to come out, Just they know that uh, it's a safe place, uh, there's no real threat uh, from anything uh, in this particular national parks or protected areas. That is why they are freely uh, moving around. Uh, Mr. Jeremendis is asking recently there's a new method of fixing electric fences on the uh, top of half buried uh, rubber tires. Uh, well, um, unfortunately, I'm not fully aware about this methodology, uh, Gerald. I can't comment on that. Uh, I hope it is going to work, but uh, very difficult. Uh, the elephants are always trying to find a way to break these fences. Uh, I don't know how effective this is uh, because I have not. Uh, read any any uh, research article or anything uh, in this particular subject um, unfortunate sorry
Okay, um, our viewers, once again, I just wanted to um, uh, remind again uh, for the competition that uh, that you you have a possibility to win uh, a trip to uh, to uh, tour to uh, Sri Lanka. This is only for international travels, uh, especially. Uh, so please log in to www.srilanka.travel backslash wild wildlife stream uh, so that uh, you will uh, you will enter the competition. So please do enter the competition so you you have a chance to uh, win uh, uh, win holidays to Sri Lanka. Or oh, it appears that uh, some technical problem of the mics uh, of Dr. Fernando. Um, I think um, you can see that hazy conditions of of Caudula uh, Caudula uh, 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 Reservoir because of the rainy conditions. Uh, but the elephant uh, herd is slowly, uh, continuously uh, moving while feeding right at the edge of the water. Uh, I mean, this is their usually, I mean, daily daily routine. Uh, they'll continue to eat for a long, long time. Uh, why they need uh, loads of food, you know, 150 kilograms a day. That's a lot of food. So, um, you know, they try to get uh, as, as much as possible uh, so that, uh, that they have enough uh, food for, uh, for the day. Uh, for our viewers that are, who are interested on tuskers, of course, you can see a uh, small tusker uh, that are a little bit behind the main big elephant. Uh, the one that you see in the foreground is uh, the white thing is not the tusk. Those are called tushers. Uh, so if some animals have uh, a little uh, longer uh, 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 teeth, uh, but that's not a real tusk. Uh, the one that uh, right behind the the, the male any male female is is a young tusker. Uh, hopefully he'll he'll survive uh, to become a, a very healthy uh, big tusker uh, in the future. So that's uh, what you see. He's is uh, a young tusker. Uh, now you can see you see him uh, well right next to the little Juno. Oh oh, he got a leg shot from his mother. I would see the see the uh, how the, the this uh, mama is protecting its its baby. You know, it's, she's the little one is always under under the shade of of mama, and uh, and you just see the the trunk movement of this little baby elephant. It's amazing how they they learn things. And even this age, of course, they are totally depending on on the on the mother's milk. But at the same time, they just try. Sometimes they mimic the mother and try to. Uh, get one or two uh, leaves of of grass and and taste it, uh, but that's how they learn. Uh, it's it's a learned behavior from mother, and it's following the mother all the time. And uh, the other members of the family is always protective uh, the little one, and uh, that's how uh, the social life of of elephants. It's amazing to watch 
um, everything uh, in, in Kaudula National Park. Oh, the little one is milking. Uh, the, uh, the mama is the other one. Yeah. No, I think this is the mama. This is a sub-adult, uh, you know, young, uh, sort of juvenile elephants, very play playful, uh, and uh, you know they always like to play with the same uh, age of juveniles. But this guy is always with the mother, and uh, you know, uh, doesn't go away from the mother. It's too small to uh, go out and play now uh, because uh, it's too small. Uh, Suranga Samra Singh is asking whether uh, do Sri Lankan herds also revolve around one matriarch? Um, yes, Suranga, uh, the matriarch uh, is is the one who is leading uh, the herd. But in Sri Lankan situation, the new research uh, conducted by Dr. Fernando and many others found that the uh, the role of matriarch is is not sure whether it's leading or whether it's giving protection to the herd or anything. Because sometimes uh, the young elephants are also taking the lead role uh, to guide the uh, the herd uh, to come out of the forest or to go to the feeding areas or something like that. So it is not 100% sure uh, the role of matriarch. Uh, so yes, the, the matriarch is there, but the role of matriarch is, is not sure. Now this uh, female is, is rushing towards the forest with its... its uh, small baby elephant and uh, she's well aware about the jeep uh, the safari jeep that is why um, she's she's keeping the the baby elephant on the other side of of its its tummy and then uh, moving towards the forest it's amazing you know how they are protective of their uh, little ones and you know, similar to to uh, humans uh, any 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 mama is like that you know all the mamas are like that uh, they're very protective of their uh, little ones so that is uh, it is up to us uh, to make sure that these animals will will survive in this this forest freely uh, forever um, for our next generation to enjoy these these sites As this mama and uh, little one has gone into the forest, uh, I think this is uh, for me to say goodbye from the uh, for the today's episode from the studio. Uh, I just wanted to remind few things. Uh, one is the is the competition. Please log into the to the website uh, www.srilanka.travel backslash livestream dot com uh, and then uh, to enter the competition. And our third uh, uh, stream. Uh, live stream uh, on Kaudula National Park again uh, scheduled on 8th of November so please uh, do join uh, to enjoy more footage uh, from Kaudula we in fact uh, plan to get uh, have two episodes from Minneria National Park uh, for this uh, streaming project but unfortunately most of the elephants have already moved from uh, Minneria to Kaudula due to the rain conditions so that uh, we are bringing uh, a second episode uh, from Kaudulla, and I'm 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 hoping that uh, more and more uh, different uh, footages, different behaviors, uh, will be able to uh, bring it from from uh, Kaudulla. So please uh, do join on 8th of November, uh, our third episode, 
and I would say uh, goodbye and thank you very much for joining our uh, streaming uh, for uh, wildlife streaming from Sri Lanka.
I have traveled the wilderness of Sri Lanka for almost 40 years. This November, we take you on a safari like never before, where we travel to see the great gathering of elephants at Mineria and Kaudula National Parks. Join me as we travel the wilds of Mineria and Kaudula to see the magic of this event that has now become the sixth greatest wildlife spectacle in the world. Sri Lanka is the best place in the whole world to see and observe Asian elephants. So we know many of the elephants as individual personalities. We then travel to elephant country, which is Udavalava National Park. You will be traveling with a group of experienced wildlife photographers and enthusiasts who will be able to tell you lots of stories, lots of experiences, which is much better than a normal safari that you would go for. We then arrive in Yala National Park, which is the home of the leopard in Asia. People say that leopards are elusive. Yala's leopards proves you wrong as they walk the day as much as they walk the night in this amazing wilderness. They're not only bringing you the unique wildlife of the small island nation, but also the stories that are connected to them from the experts who have worked in the field has. Let me take you close for an immersive couch safari this November. This is the first in Sri Lanka. Don't miss this experience.